right? My grinder's going crazy. <laughs> Changing hearts and you are opening hearts. So for that, I really, really thank you. I have bought you. 
Bottom line, there is nothing for me more powerful than a group of people all assembled in one room who actually give a shit about something. <laughs> Anyway, frequently 
I could spend my Saturday night debating these zealots for hours about why they were sure that God hated facts. Mm. I would say to them, really? How do you know? I mean, did God actually tell you that? As far as I know, God created gay people. Did God maybe have an unpleasant run-in with a bitter queen once? <laughs> it was all gay people that God hated. And how do you really know this? And that is when they begin, would begin to shuffle out their Bibles and show me passages in the Bible about Sodom and Gomorrah. And I, in turn, would show them equally absurd passages in the Bible about a time when all oh, women weren't allowed to speak or breathe or have to wear doilies on their head to go into church or were made to stand in a dirt pit while they menstruated for four days or uh, when you might be sent to hell if you mixed your fibers or when people were encouraged to, you know, gnaw their lips off or shove rocks up their bums or whatever <laughs> the ridiculous customs that those men wrote about at that time. They shouted their homophobic passages at me and then I would inevitably show them the passage in their Bibles, which is key. Love thy neighbor. Less than, which leads to the lack of human rights. 
dehumanizing, which leads directly to homophobia, hate crimes, to oppressive legislation, and to violent actions of bullies who terrorize kids who aren't their idea of what is normal. And as we all know, many of these instances of bullying, both physical and verbal, and in a lot of these young people, these wonderful, glorious, creative young people taking their own lives or getting their lives taken from them. Have any of y'all been following, they, they've been doing the story of Larry King, the 13-year-old boy who was shot at his school. Has anybody been seeing that a little bit? It was last year, and um, he was a boy, and he went to a foster home where he was finally able to be who he was, and he came to school in little heels one day. Being himself, and it was a day before Valentine's Day, and he went, everyone was going up and saying, Will you be my Valentine? And he went up to some dog boy that he had a crush on, and he said, Will you be my Valentine? And the next day, that 14 year old boy who he asked came to school with his father's gun and shot 13 year old Larry King in his classroom, executed in his classroom. They're being gay. This is not 20 years ago, it wasn't 10 years ago, it wasn't 5 years ago. It was last year, 2012. So, but tonight, we get the gift of being able to do something about this, right? What a wonderful opportunity. What a place of grace to put all of your energies and your effort and your big money into tonight. Truly amazing things have happened since I was a little young disco gay rights rebel with feather earrings and a <laughs> uh, tube tops in the 70s. <laughs> because of the work that you all and the groups like Out and Equal do, things are looking up. We have brothers and sisters living long, healthy lives with HIV AIDS, but it's not over. Keep giving, keep working. <laughs> we have Doma and Enda, which I consider two gay sisters. This is my friends Doma and Enda. <laughs> <laughs> They're both nurses, maybe? <laughs> when we have people who are out in the workplace and treated with respect at work, at school, and at home, that the human race is making progress. So, what is this all about? Why are we here? What is the gay movement? The LGBT movement is a movement based solely in love. One thing, love. It's not a movement about boundaries or religion. It is not a battle for territory or government or money. It is not a war about land or firearms. This is a movement, a whole movement, with one simple request. We would like the right to kiss and eventually love who we choose. So what do we need to do to move forward? Well, you're doing it here tonight. We commit to protecting the basic rights of LGBT elemental peas uh, who are <laughs> on the job are targeted for hate and violence on their streets, gay parents who are stripped of rights of their own children, and the millions of ordinary gay folks that just want their God, goddess-given rights, right? Who want the same freedoms afforded other people, their civil rights. And then perhaps we need to deal with, this is a little bit of a heady thing, but with shame and doubt. Now shame is not something that y'all were born with. Gays are not born with shame. This is not a personality flaw, folks. From youth, it is drilled into gays that the worst thing you can be is gay. Shame is taught. And I promise you, the homophobes out there, they can feel it and they can smell it and they will continue to use it against us until we move through it and get rid of it, both as individuals and a loving community, so we can stand as proud examples to the rest of the world as confident group of, as Mary Kramer said, fierce and proud Jews. If there is shame, they will smell it. You are going to love each other out of it, and onward and upward to your destiny. So instead of shame, let's please celebrate the Kates and the KDs and the Lilies and the Janes and the TRs and the Martinas and the Ellens and the Rosies and the Tabithas and the Sheilas and the Jessies and the Wandas and the Billy Jeans and the Ruperts and the Amandas and the Bardies and the Ians and the Lances and the Doobies and the and the second band of the Bitch and the Mr.
our lives who are brave enough to stand up and give a name and a face to homosexuality. Applaud you for that. Somebody said earlier when she was talking about um, uh, out gays in the workplace and what it does, that's what it does. It gives a name and a face to homosexuality and humanizes you. And that's the most important and the greatest thing. It's not an easy thing. It's the greatest thing you can do. You know, I have a glorious 16-year-old daughter named Samia. And when Samia was three, she had two imaginary friends, Alex and Alexandra. True story. I came here today because someday she could choose to hold imaginary hands with Alexandra or have an imaginary kiss with Alexandra or to get a secure job and move into an imaginary house with Alexandra or have an imaginary child with Alexandra. And I'm especially here because should she choose I promise you, I am going to sing Sunrise, Sunset at the top of my mouth. <laughs> imaginary legal government sanctioned wedding dress. <laughs> Finally, I have been doing this kind of speaking for years, and I always get asked the same question over and over. Are those real? Yes, they are. <laughs> Today, all of you, and out and equal, and those many programs you support, and the many good-hearted people who support you, are doing it for us. Tonight, my people, you should really be very, very proud. You are exactly where you should be. You can instead easily be out there trick-or-treating as the Kardashians, or, you know, the Sanderson sisters, you know, Thank you so much for inviting me to your party. 